Kathy and Elliot Lewis on stage. <laughs> Kathy Lewis, Elliot Lewis, two of the most distinguished names in radio, appearing each week in their own theater, starring in a repertory of transcribed stories of their own and your choosing. Radio's foremost players in radio's foremost play. Ladies and gentlemen, Elliot Lewis. Good evening. May I present my wife, Kathy? Good evening. There's a very special reason why we're doing tonight's play, but we'd rather tell you about it after the show is over. And so, as quickly as possible, we introduce the new radio play by E. Jack Newman. It's called Heartbreak. <laughs> Vicky? Dan, where have you been? It's almost seven. Oh, I got tied up at the office. I couldn't get away until all the traffic started. Hmm. Hmm. How are you? Wonderful. I'm bushed. Oh, it was a rough one today. You'll feel better after you shave and shower. Hurry, dear. You don't have much time. I'd rather sit down and have a smoke and wonder why I'm alive. Do I have to hurry to do that? We're having dinner at the Wilsons tonight. Did you forget? Um, Is it that bad? I'm tired, Vicky. Just plain tired. And I have to get at it again tomorrow, first thing. Yeah, it's that bad. You know, you could have told me this morning that you didn't want to go out. I didn't know what kind of a day it was going to be this morning. I would have told you if I'd known, believe me. Do you want me to call them up and tell them we can't make it? They're only expecting us in a half an hour. What time we do there? 7.30. A shave and shower will help. I know it will. Forget I looked sad, will you, darling? Sure. You look awful pretty to be my wife. Hmm? Too pretty for me. Could a guy have an old-fashioned while he's dressing? It sounds like a fine idea. I'll only be a minute. Well, they don't expect us to be right on time, anyhow. Does my blue suit come back in the cleaner? It's on the bed, dear. Yeah, okay. Hmm. Oh. I can't find the bitters, Dan. Dan? Dan, I can't seem to find the bitters anywhere, and I know we have some around here somewhere, and you had them last. Dan? Dan? Hey, Dan! We're in Chicago, all out. I'm looking for the bitters. Dan? Dear? Are you all right? Dan? Dan! What is it? What is it? Oh, Lord! Oh, my Lord! Do, do something, Vicky. Do something. I can't breathe. How old is Dan now? It was 38, his last birthday. How's he been feeling lately? Any complaints? No, I think he's been a little tired. He's been working very hard. He getting any exercise? He plays golf when he can, but he's been so busy, I don't think he's played in over two months. You better not like that. Hmm? The oxygen. Oh. You don't want to have an accident. Oh. Dan's never been sick a day in his life. We all get sick sometime or other. Yeah, his pulse is picking up now. That's good. Do you have any idea what's the matter? We'll know more in a minute. Okay. Is he conscious? Mm-hmm. He's all right. Hello, Dan. Um, well... Easy now, easy. You've had a little trouble, Dan, but it's all over now. Just used some oxygen to help you out of it. Oxygen? Vicky? Here, here. Right here, dear. Uh, Lie still, darling. I guess I must have scared you, honey. I don't think I'd ever breathe again. 
I was just starting to shave, and I felt this pain. Where, Dad? Right up here in my chest. It spread all the way down my arm here. You feel any pain now, Dad? No. It feels a little tight is all. Here? No. Here? No. Mm Mm-hmm. Anything like this ever happened before? No. Well, we'll get you straightened out, Dan. Take it easy. I want to use the phone. Uh, Just as you come in at the front of the hall. Dan, I'm going to take you to the hospital tonight. I want to find out what this is all about. You might want to get some things together for him. I don't want to go to any hospital. Dan, this could be your heart. The hospital's the best place to find out. Excuse me, I'll make that call. Guy must be crazy. I never had any trouble with my heart, Vicky. You know that. Vicky? Pretty good, I guess. I'm not used to this kind of thing much. Are they treating you all right? Give me your arm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I suppose they're treating me all right, but you aren't. I need a phone in here. I got business to take care of. Let somebody else take care of it for a few days, Dan. I don't want you to have a phone. just want you to get some rest. Okay. Mm. Can't get much rest worrying about things at the office. I'm afraid you have a little damage in here. My heart? Yeah. We'll have to get busy and clear it up and get you feeling good again. What do you mean, a little damage? How bad is it? Looks like an acute coronary occlusion. Best way to treat it is for you to stay here in the hospital for a while. How long? Three weeks, I'd say. Vicky and I are supposed to go east in two weeks. I know, she told me. But the main thing to think about right now is getting you back on your feet. Making you completely well. You're very lucky. We caught it early. We know about it. And we can do something about it right away. Could it have been something else beside my heart? It's your heart, Dan. Couldn't have been that I've been working too hard? It's your heart, Dan. And the sooner you pull off that long face, the better off you'll be. People recover from heart attacks and heart disease. I have a lot of patients just like you back at their old jobs, enjoying their work the same as before. So don't let any fables you've heard about this sort of thing get in the way of the facts. I'm not interested in people. It's me lying here wondering about the payments on the house and the car. Let's talk about me, huh? We want to make a few more cardiographs and keep a close eye on you. We'll do everything we can to help you. But it won't mean a thing, Dan, unless you help yourself. You want to do that, don't you? Oh, sure. I'll get it. I can reach you. I know you can. Now, here. Thanks. (laughs) And when you get home, you can start in gradually. Limit your activities a little bit. Your work and your play... You're smoking and drinking. Avoid exertion of every kind. You don't have to carry those groceries from the car. Let somebody else do it. The elevator instead of the stairs, you know. When you need rest, you rest. When you need food, you eat. When you need relaxation, you take it. Now, do those things during your convalescing period, and you won't have anything to worry about. Oh. Vicky's already planning for the time when you'll come home. I talked for a little while. Why does she come over and see me? I asked her not to come until this evening. All she wants you to do is get well, Dan. That's all any of us want you to do. We'll all do our best. I know you can get over this. And it won't take long, either. Well, I've got to be running along. I'll drop in on you a little later. Anything you want, Dan, just ring the nurse. Okay? See you this afternoon. Nurse? Give me back my health. Uh, That's what I want. My health. listening to Kathy and Elliot Lewis on stage. Tonight's play, Heartbreak. 
If you're a smart young lad these days, you don't wait for old man opportunity to come knocking at your door. Go out and find him yourself. And a good place to look is in America's many fine engineering schools. Today, good engineers are needed in hundreds of varied fields. You can build a fine career as a trained engineer and at the same time help maintain America's scientific and engineering superiority. Well, I'll say this for hospital life. You certainly find out how much money the florists and card makers are pulling in every year. If I had a nickel for every get-well-fast card that came in here, I'd be able to pay the hospital bill. You are loved and cherished by one and all, Dan. I'm so adorable. Yes. Hey. Hmm? Yes, Dan? You are smelling very good. I try to, always. Honey? Yes? I can't say I'm too happy to be in this jam. But now that I'm here, I'm going to make the best of it. That's all any of us can do, dear. At first, I thought I... Oh, I thought an awful lot of thoughts. You were very depressed, dear. I was mad, too. Mostly at Kim, who was only doing his job as a doctor. After he left, I got mad at myself. Then I got mad at you. I had quite a time. I know, dear. There's nothing funny about this sort of thing. Well, it won't last forever. Living's pretty attractive. I want to keep on doing it. You'll have to be very careful, Dan. I can be careful. All I'm looking forward to right now is getting up and getting out of here as soon as I can. Being home. With you. Where I belong. Hmm? Yes. I'm lucky they caught it early. Lots easier to cure this way. Could have been twice as bad. As bad. <sighs> Dan. Hmm? I'm going to take good care of you. I feel fine. <laughs> well, you should feel fine, Dan. Lying around here for three weeks doing nothing but eating and sleeping and holding hands with nurses. When does it look like you'll be getting out? Well, as a matter of well, fact, I had some... for a little news. while yet, Jim. Well, these things take time, huh? Now, Vicky hated it when I first came here. Now I think she wants me to stay. No, dear. I just want to be sure you're ready to leave. I guess you'll be glad to get him home, Vicky. <sighs> Hospital's no place for Dan. Oh, say, it's nine o'clock already. Yes, I have to be leaving, too. It was sure nice seeing you, Dan. I'll tell everybody downtown how well you're looking. Be sure, Mister. It won't be long now. Thanks for stopping by, Jim. And, Dan, as soon as these people here say it's okay, I'm expecting you back at the office. That's where we really miss you. I better get out of here now. Good night, Vicky. Good night, Jim. Good night, Dan. Take it easy. Yeah, I will. Good night, folks. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Jim Givney talks as much as ever, doesn't he? Yeah, he seems to. I better go, dear. Rules are rules. Vicky, did you have any reason for not telling him when I'm leaving? Yes, I, I, I thought it, it might be better if you got home and got used to things first. If he knew you were coming home Friday, he'd expect you downtown Monday morning. And you, you just can't do that for a while, Dan. I know, but I hardly think he'd expect anything like that. Dan, we're going to have to live with this and, and, and work it out together. Let's do it slow, huh? All right. If anything ever happened to you, Dan, I'd die. I'd just die. <laughs> Home. Home. Give me your arm, darling. Look, I got pants on for the first time in four weeks. I feel like a man again. I want to walk up to my own front door alone. Well, let me help. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, slowly, dear. I don't have to creep. But you don't have to run. I ought to do something about this lawn pretty soon. Don't you worry about the lawn. I'll do it. I was kind of looking forward to trimming up the edges around the plants, you know. Next year, maybe. Well, sir. Look good to you? It sure does. Boy, home. You better sit down, dear. I feel fine. Doctor says I got to start exercising a little bit, anyhow. But sit down for now. Yeah, okay. 
No, don't... What? Don't pull the chair over. I want to look at the fireplace. I'll, I'll turn it around, Dan. There. Oh, huh? thanks. Now, Dan, make yourself comfortable. Yeah. <sighs> Remember, dear, you can't do those things now. A little exertion could be very harmful. Uh-huh. Well, you know that's true, dear. I don't have to tell you. You're right. You're absolutely right. I'm going to have to watch it. I have an observation. You do? You may be a little tougher than they were at the hospital. <laughs> You're not my patient. You're my husband. You better go to bed now. Yeah. <clears throat> well, at least I'm home. <laughs> Guy can't have everything, can he? It's all right. It's all right, dear. It's only the wind. Oh, I better close the wind. I'll get it. I'll get it. Oh, I forgot. Can I get you anything, dear? No. <clears throat> Moon's pretty. Mm hmm. I was having a dream. I was very active. I was running and jumping and swimming and doing all sorts of things. It felt fine. You better get some sleep. I'll never get back to that dream. You'll run and jump and swim again someday, dear. Don't kid yourself. Hmm? Don't kid yourself, Vicky. I'm not kidding myself. People who have what I have don't get well. But they do, Dan. They get well and carry on their lives the same as before. Oh, why don't you face it? I am facing it. Then you'd get rid of me and get yourself a man. I'm just a vegetable this way. Don't say anything like that. Don't ever say anything like that. You're my husband. I love you. Sickness and in health, remember? Yeah, it was swell as long as both lasted. I'm serious, Vicky. Leave me. Uh, I've been thinking about it ever since I got home and really found out what it's like trying to live with a bad heart. I could kid myself in the hospital because a hospital's geared for sick people, but a house is for people who are well and can do things. I can't even toss a salad for you without wondering if... without wondering if that thing will come up again and it'll be the last salad I'll ever toss. This is no good this way, Vicky. No fun, no trips, no laughs. You don't want it. Dear, dear, please, I love you. I'll always love you. Love isn't going to cure me. Don't you see that, Vicky? I'm an invalid. How does it look? Normal. Nothing wrong with Dan's blood pressure. You sure? It's okay. Shh. I seem to get that feeling in here every now and then, you know. Any pain? No, no pain. Mm-hmm. Well, I can't find anything, Dan. Well, I've... I just want to make sure everything's going okay. It is. You're doing nicely. But I'm glad you called me over. You can start thinking about going back to work pretty soon now. Wow, that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah, that'll be swell. Now, not a full day or anything like it to start off with. But it's not too soon for you to call them up and tell them you're ready to come for a half day to start. Oh, I've got some of the calls to make. I'll take you to the door. All right. You cover up, honey. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm so relieved you told him about work. It'll do him good to get out of that bed. I was going to call you myself today if he hadn't called. I, I, I'm, I'm just about at the end of my rope. Ever since Dan came home from the hospital, it's been one thing after another, and last night was the worst. I I've tried to look after him, do all the things that have to be done for him, but I just can't seem to do enough. Are you both working a little too hard at this? What? He has every chance for a complete recovery. Somehow, he's reluctant to advance anymore. I noticed it tonight. Well, goodness, he's being cautious. We're both being cautious. Don't be overcautious. The day Dan left the hospital, he couldn't wait to get back home and get started again. He's been home almost two months now, and he seems worried over his condition more than ever before. He's turning into a cardiac invalid. What's that? People who just think they can't do anything. 
Wait a minute. Wait. Hmm? Dan's not scared. He's not scared of anything. I know it. Have you asked him? No. Ask him, Vicky. Hey, tell me Sam Clemens did all of his writing in bed. I wonder if I could be a writer. You're a pretty good businessman. I was a pretty good businessman. Dan, I want to ask you something. Answer it honestly. Sure. Dan, are you scared to go back to work? Dan? I'm the guy who doubled up on the bathroom floor that night. I know and you know I was about an inch away from maternity there, and I'll never get it out of my mind. It can happen again any time. Kimball talking about me going back to work, that's a laugh. One day down there, one hour down there, and they wouldn't even bother dropping me off at the hospital. I'd go straight to the morgue. Am I scared? You bet your boots I'm scared, Vicky. I'm scared every single second I'm awake. You don't want me to leave you. You asked me. I just said I did. I'll say it again. Clear out. This is no fun. You said it, but you don't want me to leave you. You want me to stay around forever, waiting on your hand and foot, feeling sorry for you. Just the way you feel sorry for yourself right now. No, thanks, Dan. I, I didn't bargain for that when I married you. Let me remind you of something. I had a heart attack, remember? I remember. Dan, help yourself, please. I care. All you have to do is get out of this bed and get busy with the job of getting well. Or you can stay here the rest of your life. If you do that, you do it alone. Dan, if you don't help yourself, I really will leave you. Well, that's your choice, Vicky. I don't have one. Dan, wake up. It's time. Dan? 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 Hi. Well. <laughs> Hi. I got a little fat, didn't I? Yeah, a little. Still fits nicely. What's for breakfast? Oh, what would you like? The works, eggs and bacon, you know. Can I comb my hair first? Sure. If you were going to ask me, I feel fine. Well, I was. You know, last night you had some pretty snappy things to say once you got going. I've been thinking Dan, about Dan, I've all got that. something to tell you. I, I've been as scared as you. I think I'm the one who made you scared. Everyone made me scared, Vicky. But a funny thing happened to me this morning. I got up and I said to myself, I don't want Vicky to walk out on me. I don't want Vicky to stay here and live like a robot. What do you want, I said. I said, I don't want to be sick anymore. I don't want to be scared. Oh, Dad. Yeah, that's the conversation I had with myself. I put in a call to Jim Givney a little while ago. He ought to be calling back pretty soon. You're going back to work? I sure am. That's him now. I got it. I got it. Hello? Jim Givney, Dan. How's the boy? I'm fine, Jim. I want to get back on the job. Well, we want you back on the job. When? Today. Right now. You sound pretty anxious. I am. I've had enough of this laying around. And I don't want you to have any more of it, Dan. You've got new working hours. What? You'll be here at 11 o'clock. And don't let me catch you around here later than 2. I can't get much work done in three hours. I don't want you to get much work yet. I just want you to work into it gradually. Look, Dan, I'm your boss. You do what I say. No more 8.30 in the morning to 7 at night. If you get overburdened, we'll hire somebody to help you. But we've got you in good shape again. We want to keep you that way. We understand each other? Sure, Jim, sure. Love to Vicky. See you at 11. Hey, You won't let me come in until 11. That's all right, dear. Yeah. You know, I've been pushed one way and pulled another a lot lately. Maybe I ought to ride the middle. Otherwise, I'll do something crazy again. 
I was crazy enough to try to lose you, Vicky. I couldn't stand that. Oh, Dan, no. No, no, wait. When Kim told me it was my heart, I got used to it. I got used to the idea of being sick. Well, if I could get used to that, I guess I can get used to the idea of being well, too. So that's the way it is, dear. Do you want me and my foolish heart and my... Hmm. <laughs> Dan. Oh. It's good to be alive again. <laughs> 